Hey guys, it's Neon, and we're going to talk about the changing digital media landscape. Oh my God. So we're going to talk about uh, Vice and, and how uh, Disney has lost almost a half a billion dollars on Vice. And then we're going to talk about how yet another gaming website is shutting down. You know, just a couple of years ago, Vice and BuzzFeed and all these sites, uh, Gizmodo, they were hot commodities. And now um, they're essentially worthless. Most of these sites were, were living off of venture capital. And it looks like the venture capital is, is not, uh, it's the, these investors are not getting their money back. They're not getting their money back. So Disney, put $400 million into Vice Media. Now it says that investment is worthless. This is coming from Vox, uh, which I guess would technically be a competitor. A now familiar story, investors say they overvalued a high-flying digital publisher just a few years ago. Big media companies were falling over themselves to bet on Vice Media. Disney made the biggest bet, putting over $400 million into the swashbuckling digital publisher. Now Disney says all the money it put into Vice has been incinerated. An investor filing um, investor filings on Wednesday, Disney said it no longer thinks it will ever get any return on the investment it made in Vice, a company that at one point was supposedly worth $5.7 billion. Vice, of course, had a lot of layoffs. Vice is consolidating its websites. They got rid of uh, Waypoint, which was a gaming site, which is going to lead us into talking about uh, what's going on with other gaming sites now. And a lot of these sites, let's be honest, a lot of these sites are coming from uh, a very far kind of uh, political uh, bent, usually a very far left political bent. And it just seems like, uh, you know, maybe gamers, maybe gamers are being tired of being insulted all the time. Maybe they're tired of being blamed for everything and they're not uh, reading these blogs. So Vice is still worth something in some investors' eyes. Last week, a group of lenders say they put a fresh round of $250 million into the company. Why would you put another $250 million into a company that's hemorrhaging cash. Disney's accounting decision is yet another example, perhaps the most stunning one of the turnabout we've seen in digital media over the past few years. Investors have decided that high-flying publishers at once confidently explained they create new media, a new media paradigm are now worth very little or even less. Yeah. Um, and all of these publishers popped up at about the same time. And this is really you know, you can kind of trace all of this. You know, we, we talk about this so much on this channel where these bloggers, these quote unquote journalists constantly attack established fandoms. Fandoms that have been around for years, existed for years before these people came on the scene and will exist for years after these people exit the scene. And it goes back about three or four years, five years. And this is when all these sites sort of uh, popped up. You know, they kind of popped up and they decided that they were going to attack fans, attack gamers, attack comic book readers, attack uh, Star Wars fans. I mean, again and again and again. And now look at this. Uh, they're in the shit now, right? Uh, a lot of them are, are losing money because guess what? People... Your target demographic doesn't like to be insulted. They don't like to be told that they're awful people. So they're not going to visit your site if your site is telling them they're awful people. Uh, Mike, which raised more than 60 million, sold for less than 5 million late last year. Like, I, I, like a moderately successful YouTuber could have bought Mike, right? Like you could have uh, upper class, uh, middle class uh, YouTuber could have bought Mike and probably paid cash. <laughs> for it, Mashable, which was valued at about 250 million in 2016, sold for less than 50 million in 2017. Look how far they dropped just in a year. The tide is turning. People don't want these sites. They don't want these sites. And I really expect more casualties, especially with Gizmodo. Um, you know, Gawker got, well, we know what happened with Gawker in the Hulk, H the Hulk Hogan uh, lawsuit. And what's left of Gawker. Uh, became Gizmodo and got sold off um, from Univision because it was hemorrhaging money and they shut down Waypoint, which was another one of these, you know, garbage uh, gaming sites. Uh, they attacked gamers and took, you know, weird political bents. And, and it's just all gonna, it's all gonna come to a head pretty soon. And I think we're gonna see more uh, comic book blogs go this route too, because they're dealing with, with such a, a smaller, a smaller, uh, number of, of people and advertisers. I think we're going to see sites like, uh, you know, the Mary Sue and Bleeding Cool and some of these other pop culture news outlets uh, eventually fold in the next couple of years. As my my personal opinion, I think we'll see 
more fan-centered sites pop up, and I think we'll see a, a rise in the influence of YouTubers uh, covering uh, pop culture news for fans, by fans, for fans. Um, the properties formerly known as Gawker, yeah, plus The Onion just sold for prices likely well below $50 million. Univision, the TV conglomerate which sold them off, had paid $135 million for Gawker in 2016. We don't know yet the value of Comcast, which... Uh, the value that Comcast put into Vox, they put in $600 million into Vox and BuzzFeed over the past few years. Now those two publishers are, are not worth it. It's a reasonable bet that Comcast thinks they're worth, worth less than they were worth in 2015. Yeah, and this is how this works too. People like, look, Comcast and Disney have their fingers in so many of these blogs or so many of these blogs. If you follow the money, you will see that even if they don't own a blog directly, they might own a stake in it through another company. Uh, they might um, be you know, access media. I mean, this is the way this works. These mega corporations are investing in new media to promote their products. Nerdist is owned by Legendary Pictures. It's basically a mouthpiece for Legendary Pictures. Uh, Comic Speak, we talked about that the other day. Now, Comic Speak was for, for years independent but now they're owned by lion forge and lion forge and oni you know uh combined and they do give a disclaimer that they're owned you know by that company but again it's like you know here we have a comic book publisher uh owning a comic book blog you know and we have uh movie blogs owned by movie studios i mean this is the truth this is why you know you see a lot of the articles you see and usually you know, there, there's something behind when there's an attack on a fandom. Sometimes it's just weirdo people saying weirdo things. Sometimes there's some kind of like a, a Machiavellian business uh, deal going on there too, where they're trying to discredit a competitor's film or boost their own film or make a certain segment of fandom look bad because, you know, they're trying to go after another segment. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff going on behind the scenes, but it's, it's turning out to all be bullshit. And these sites cannot survive because they're not they're not real. They're not appealing to real people. It's, they've been propped up with venture capital and uh, for so long that they just cannot survive when they actually have to go out and, and find advertisers because nobody wants to to really go there, right? Um, you know. So all these companies have uh, different stories. The through line is that a few years ago, all of them were confident that they were going to shoot up in value because they knew how to reach young audiences by exploiting the big tech platforms, in particular Facebook and Google. Instead, Facebook and Google have hoovered over the majority of digital ad revenue, the money that the new publishers expected to get once they reached scale, and publishers that had expected Facebook and Google to rely on them for content have learned that Facebook and Google really don't need them after all. No, this is true. YouTubers are replacing these blogs. This is why, you know, again, when we talk about comics, and we talk about the comic book industry and we talk about how, you know, all these these comic book blogs are suddenly attacking comic book YouTubers. I mean, part of it, yeah, maybe political part of it, maybe they actually believe what they believe. But a big part of it is, you know, they are losing eyeballs, you know, uh, bleeding cool is lo losing eyeballs to, uh, you know, random people making uh, comic book review videos on YouTube. And yeah, they may not agree with them politically, but beyond that, it's, 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 you know, kind of a survival thing. They're, they're losing eyeballs to YouTube. And why should Google share, you know, Google already with YouTubers, they take half your money. Um, you know, it's a 50, 50 split with, uh, YouTube and creators and they really, you know, don't need, <laughs> they don't need these blogs to try to get in. You look at some of these blogs and you look at their YouTube presence and it's pathetic because they're trying to get people to go to, the blog and it's not working. I mean, honestly, uh, you know, a lot of YouTubers who cover the stories and they pull up articles like this are probably making, they are probably making more money off of a video talking about a dumb blog, uh, a dumb blog article than the blog is actually making themselves. I guarantee you when we've talked about comic book websites and, uh, we've, we've, you know, mocked some of the pop culture, uh, news outlets and some of the, the, the just the stupidity that comes out of these, these, uh, you know, websites, we probably have made more money on those videos than the the company that actually produced the content. <laughs> it's crazy. So that's kind of where we're at. Um, so, so Variety is shutting down their gaming section. Uh, this is like days after it was announced that Vice was going to shut down. Uh, I believe it was Waypoint, which was a, a you know a very very far left gaming site. Uh, you know, Vice obviously is having 
trouble here, but uh, this version of the story coming from One Angry Gamer, and they link to Bleeding Cool, so I'll kind of go through both here. Uh, Variety has plans on axing its gaming section consisting of uh, Brian uh, Crescente and its freelancers such as uh, Michael Feuder once E3 wraps up so they know they're going away. The news was kept under wraps until the editor over uh, until the editor over at Variety's gaming section outed the news via Twitter. Bleeding Cool caught wind of the tweet. It was posted on May 10th. And this sucks. I have been there. I've been there knowing that layoffs were coming and wondering if I was going to be part of it or not. Especially if you're uh, if you're in a uh, like a management uh, position and you have access to the financials and you look at the financials and you're like, oh my God, I see exactly where uh, where this is going, right? And um, so this is uh, Crescente, Crescente, Crescente? I don't know. Uh, I see word getting out about Variety Gaming, good news, bad news. We're going to have some great E3 coverage this year. I will no longer have a job the day the show ends. Ain't no party like an E3 party, so I hope he parties hard. I don't know where he's going to go. Hopefully, uh, you know, these people find jobs elsewhere. But given that journalists are losing their jobs left and right, I find it, uh, you know, I, it might be, it might be uh, uh, unlikely. I don't know. I can't say what the future holds for gaming at Variety, but I will say that if you're looking for excellent writers and reporters, all the freelance writers I worked with are exceptional. Yeah, uh, join the club. I mean, Waypoint just laid a bunch of people off. Uh, we've got, uh, you know, over in comics, you know, Lion Forge laid a bunch, a bunch of people off. I mean. These people are losing jobs like crazy because they can no longer be propped up by venture capital. So, as pointed out by Bleeding Cool, uh, he joins Variety's uh, he joined Variety's gaming channel last year in 2018 after Rolling Stone's Glixel closed up shop. So Rolling Stone shut their gaming site. I didn't know Rolling Stone had a gaming site. Why are all these publishers like gaming is hot? We need to get some of that, you know? And and they they just can't do it. They can't do it. Uh, uh, okay, so Rolling Stone launched Glixel in 2016. They did not last long and then uh, began winding down its operations by laying off all the staff in the San Francisco offices in 2017. Wow. By late June of 2018, Rolling Stone had shut it down. Uh, they, Crescente tried his hand at Variety's gaming section, but despite getting premier spots on the front page of Google News and the Google search engine, as well as breaking various stories that were linked by all the major gaming outlets, it still wasn't enough to keep this section alive. This has become an increasing trend in recent times with Vice also folding Waypoint recently, among other verticals, and uh, Gizmodo Media or Geo Media, whatever they're calling it now, also laid off staff after recently purchasing the Gizmodo branch of websites from Univision including Kotaku. And I think Kotaku uh, might be next on the chopping block. I, I can see them winding down Kotaku because uh, I don't know. I don't know. I, I just, I, I have a hunch. Uh, there seems to be a trend lately where a lot of gaming websites are shutting down or trimming down. It looks like a lot of the anti-consumer sentiment these outlets propagated back in 2014 is now coming back to bite them hard in the wallet. Yeah, that's really when a lot of this started. Uh, 2013, 2014, uh, these, these sites have been living on venture capital. You know, usually you get about five years. If you can't turn a profit in five years, you get shut down. And uh, everybody was betting on these these websites that they were going to sort of tame gamers. And, and we see it with comics too. They're going to tame comics audiences. And and uh, we're going to, you know, turn them into a kinder, gentler, <laughs> you know, kinder, gentler demographic. And 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 they, they rebel. You know, gamers have always been a pretty tough, a pretty tough lot. Uh, comic book readers, not as much, but I think they're getting there. I think they're starting uh, to push back much, much harder. And you're going to see more of this. So here's the original version from Bleeding Cool. Again, you know, Bleeding Cool, I, I, I don't know how Bleeding Cool stays in business. The publisher that bankrolls Bleeding Cool doesn't seem to make a lot of money. So... Uh, I don't know if they're they're uh, you know funded by advertising or just you know I, I don't know I don't know how they're bankrolled, but Bleeding Cool I, I really could see being a casualty of this as well, and um, so yeah I mean I don't know what to I don't know what to say here like we're gonna we're gonna see more of this we're gonna see more gaming sites shut down we're gonna see more of these uh, you know uh, millennial focused uh, websites shut down lay journalists off until. You know, we sort of uh, have numbers that are in line with the actual demographic, right? I mean, meanwhile, you have other websites, other YouTube channels popping up that are exploding because people are looking for an alternative um, to to what they're they're what's being pushed. You know, they're looking for an alternative to Vice and BuzzFeed and uh, Kotaku, and uh, you know, and Google's happy. I think Google, for the most part, is happy to host those channels because uh, they make money. 
you know, now of course we've got, you know, some pushback from mainstream media against Google, against YouTube, because they, they want their cut and, and, you know, YouTube does not have to share. So it's going to be really interesting to watch this. I think we're going to see a very, very different digital landscape in, uh, you know, two years from what we have today. And I think it's going to be more balanced as all things should be. Hey guys, thanks for watching Clownfish TV. Please consider supporting the channel. Go to clownfishsupport.com. That's clownfishsupport.com. And if you want to join our community, go to clownfishtalk.com. That's clownfishtalk.com. Please subscribe, ring the bell for notifications. We will talk to you next time.